Hey, good morning. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to clear up uh, and, you know, some people got uh, a tad confused about my post uh, regarding, you know, the Greek and, and the Hebrew. Uh, so th this video, I just want to clear some stuff up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so what I was referring to about Mark and avoiding people that, uh, you know, try to correct the King James Bible, you know, by going back to the Greek and the Hebrew, um, I was referring to people that, you know, you, you, you'll look down on it at your Bible and you see something that's just so obvious in the King James, okay? But these people will try to convince you that that's not true. And they'll, you know, go back to the Greek or go back to the Hebrew and try to teach some sort of false doctrine where, you know, it, it, it's so obvious that they're lying. And an example of this is uh, I've, heard, I've heard Calvinists try to basically attack John 3.16 by going back to the Greek and, you know, going around saying that, you know, the, the world really means elect. And to them, elect, it just means all the special Calvinist people. So, you know, so they're just lying about what the Bible clearly says in John 3.16 try to teach a false doctrine that Jesus didn't die for everybody. And look, those are the types of people you need to mark and avoid. And look, if you go back to the Greek and the Hebrew, it's going to say the same thing it says in the King James Except it's going to say it in Greek and in Hebrew. Okay? <laughs> um, and look, Satan wants you to doubt God's word. And, you know, a lot of false teachers try to attack the King James Bible by acting like they're some sort of Greek and Hebrew scholar and they probably couldn't even order Greek food at a restaurant in Greek and, you know, they they probably couldn't even pronounce correctly like five Hebrew words. Um, but they want to, you know, try to teach you some sort of false doctrine to get you to doubt what it says in your King James Bible. And look, the King James translators knew Greek and Hebrew, okay? <laughs> they were true scholars, and the King James Bible is an accurate translation of the Hebrew Masoretic text and, uh, you know, the, the Greek uh, Textus Receptus. And, you know... One of my biggest concerns about, you know, the these people that pretend to be scholars so that they can, you know, cast doubt on the King James is that, look, if you needed to really know Greek and Hebrew to understand the Bible... God would have told us to learn Greek and Hebrew. Okay. Yeah, you know, I'm not against learning Greek and Hebrew, but it's not necessary for you to understand God's word. Okay. God knows other languages. There's even examples in the Bible of God's word being translated in other languages. Okay. And also, uh, I guess maybe ironically, you may call it ironically that, you know, 
a few chapters in the Old Testament were actually originally penned down in Ar Aramaic. But I never hear these people talking about going back to the Aramaic to really, you know, get the meaning of, of the chapters. Because <laughs> they know it's not necessary either because you can accurately translate things. <laughs> and uh, God preserves his word. He promised that he would preserve his word. And to think, you know, to think that you can't have God's word in the English language, that's just ridiculous. I mean, it, the English language is, it's the world's language now, okay? Billions of people at least speak a decent amount of English. And, you know, not many people know Hebrew. Um, most Jews don't even know Hebrew fluently. And there's even a smaller minority of people that know Hebrew and Greek. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> so you have the Bible in the English language and, you know, the, the Bible is also preserved in other languages. Okay. You know, you, you can have the Bible in Spanish, and Portuguese, and Russian, Italian. You have the you can have the Bible in other languages, and you don't need to learn a foreign language for you to understand God's word. Um, and again, I'm not against you know Hebrew and Greek. I'm against people pretending that they know Hebrew and Greek so they can try to, you know, change what your Bible says in the language that you understand so that they can, you know, put a false doctrine upon you. Um, and, look, I, here's just, you know, Greek, okay? But you know what? Most people don't even know that the New Testament was originally written in Greek. Okay, so... And mo again, most people don't even speak Greek. So to think that... God's just going to hide all this stuff from them, not give them the opportunity to know clear doctrine in their language just because they don't know Greek. And, you know, another thing, too, is, uh, you know, if you, if you use the Strong's Concordance correctly, it, it could be a useful tool. But realize that there's no you know, strong concordances in, like, every other language. That's kind of like a a privilege we have in English. <laughs> you know, we're, we're the strongest concordance, that, you know, to from the Greek and the Hebrew to the English and stuff. Um, so if you needed a strongest concordance to understand the Bible, then a lot of people in other countries would be in a whole lot of trouble, <laughs> okay? Um, and look, English is my second language, okay? And the King James Bible was translated from the Greek into Hebrew. You know, the, the Hebrew Masoretic and the, the Greek uh, Texas Receptus here. And you know, Portuguese is my first language. And I also have a, a Bible in Portuguese. And it too was translated from the same Hebrew text and the same Greek text that the King James Bible was translated from. And, you know, when I read the Bible in Portuguese, 
obviously it's in Portuguese, but it sounds like the King James. Okay, and you know why it sounds like the King James? Because they were translated from the same source. And there's power in God's word when I when I hear it in Portuguese. Um, and when I read it in Portuguese. And you know what? You know, I, I can't speak Spanish that well. Like, I have a kind of an accent, you know, and stuff. But I can uh, read and, uh, and understand Spanish pretty well. And the reign of Valera Gomez sounds very similar to, you know, the King James Bible and the, the Portuguese Bible. And the reign of Valera Gomez was not translated from the Texas Receptus and the Hebrew Masoretic text, it was actually translated from the King James Bible. And the King James Bible was translated from the Greek and the Hebrew. And the King James Bible is an accurate translation. And because the King James Bible is an accurate translation, the reign of Valera Gomez in Spanish uh, has power because it was, you know, because the King James Bible is equal to the Greek and the Hebrew. Because it's an accurate translation. Um, and that's the balance we should have. You know, I know there's just like crazy Ruckmanite view that the King James Bible corrects the Greek and the Hebrew. And that's weird. No. Um, there was nothing wrong with the Greek and the Hebrew. Um, you know, the only problem you would have with it if you, is if you didn't know Greek and Hebrew. But that doesn't mean that they're incorrect. Um, that just means you just don't understand Greek and Hebrew and you need the Bible in your language. It's, in the case of most people listening to this video, it would be English. Okay. So, you know, the, the King James, it's not superior to the Greek and Hebrew, but it's also not inferior to the Greek and Hebrew. Because look, it's just a fact. More people have been saved throughout history from a King James Bible than they have from a Texas Receptus. You know, in Greek. I mean, obviously, again, the King James Bible, you know, the New Testament part of the King James Bible was translated from the, the Greek Texas Receptus. Um... But what I'm saying is that, you know, people hearing the Texas Receptus in Greek, yeah, if they understand Greek, they can get saved out of that. But way more people throughout history speak English, and way more churches have been started, and way more gospel has been preached in English than it has in Greek. And the King James Bible is the most sold book in the history of the world. It's the most bought book, the most read book in the history of the world. And in America, at least, you can at least you you can go to the the Dollar Tree and buy the Bible. You can buy God's Word for a dollar at, at Dollar Tree, and. Um, Look, so the most read and bought book in the history of the world is, it is the King James Bible. And to think that God, God would allow the most read book in the history of humanity be a heretical book, you're nuts. <laughs> um, look, th there's also some other extreme where, you know, people who get, like, too involved into, like, Greek and Hebrew, 
some of them like they they won't even they won't even say Jesus like the the they'll say like Yeshua. And look, if you're a Jew, I don't care if you call him Yeshua, but like to. But if you're not a Jew and you think that you can't say Jesus. Because it has a J in it or something, um, you're you're out in left field in some crazy extreme, okay. <laughs> and also, let's be honest. If if we didn't have the King James Bible, most of us, or you know at the Bible in the English language, okay? We didn't have the Bible in the English language. And most of us um, listening to this video would not be saved. Um, you know, the vast majority of things I've learned about Christ have been in English. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, I, I I read the Bible in Portuguese now as well. But you know, when I was a baby Christian, everything I I learned about Christ at first it it, it was in English, and um, this weird thing that some pastors try to pull off where they they pretend they're a Greek scholar, and what it creates is like a this clergyman class that that people have to go to to, to to they think to understand the bible and that you know the roman catholics were 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 like that where they they would try to have the bible and you know they they had false manuscripts but they have those manuscripts in latin and they wanted people to not understand what was being said so that they would go to the clergyman um, you know and then the clergyman could just teach them whatever and there's people now that they're, they're wolves okay they're wolves now that they want you to doubt God's word in your language that you can understand so that, you know, you would go to them, ask them what the Bible says in a language that you don't understand, and that they would teach you whatever they want to teach you. And unfortunately, yes, this exists, okay? Look, God's not the author of confusion. Some people are never going to learn Greek and Hebrew. And God still wants them to be saved. God still wants them to know his word. And um, thank God that we have the Bible in other languages. Okay. And that also helps with preservation because it's, you know... It's harder for heretics to, you know, get rid of God's word. If it's in lang multiple languages that, you know, people can understand in their, in their native tongues and things like that. Anyways, I hope this clears up. Um, you know, my comment, you know, I, I don't, I don't think you're a heretic if you use the Strong's Concordance. Okay. Um but I would I would think you're a heretic if you if you try to teach something like oh the the world uh in John three sixteen, it doesn't mean everybody, it just means special Calvinist people. Don't you know Greek boy? <laughs> <laughs> uh anyways, love you guys. Um hope this made sense. Take care. God bless. Bye.